Hello, in this video you will learn how it was possible to steal all your private and unlisted videos from YouTube by spoofing a YouTube TV and exploiting a CSR vulnerability. Unlike the previous write-up I covered on my channel about the topic, this bug allows to steal the whole video with sound, with original quality and without knowing the video ID. It was identified by a hunter who knows everything about YouTube. David Schertz. Link to his blog post is in the description. Enjoy! On YouTube you can pair your phone or your browser with the TV to control it remotely. To do this you can be signed to a different account and you can be on a different network than the TV. Interestingly, on the TV you can also play your private videos. And I'm not gonna lie, a few times I was wondering how does this work? But I thought that in order to test this I would need to somehow attach to my TV, so I didn't do that. But the truth is that YouTube TV app just uses a web view. Web view allows the application to embed a website and YouTube TV app just embeds youtube.com slash TV URL this way. While visiting this address from your browser, you can just change the user agent and you will be served the TV version of the application. Then you can pair a TV with the browser or the phone. The process looks like this. First, the TV requests a screen ID from Generate Screen ID endpoint. Then, using this screen ID, the TV requests a launch token. This token will be very important later in the exploit. Next, the TV sends a request to get pairing code endpoint with the launch token and in the response there's a 9-digit pin code. This pin code is presented on the screen. Then the user fills in this pin code in the browser. The browser makes a request to get screen endpoint with this pin code. If the pin code is valid, the response contains a launch token for the user. It's the same token as in step 3 and it allows the user to control the TV. From now on, the TV periodically sends requests to the bind endpoint to see if there are any new comments from the user. When the user clicks on Watch on TV button, the browser makes a POST request to the bind endpoint with the ID of the video and the launch token. Then the launch API responds to the TV with ID of that video which is then played for the user. So we can just change the ID of the video to a private one, you might think. But it's not that easy. Because when the video is private, the response from the launch API contains an additional parameter, CTT. It's a token that allows the TV to access the private video. And the hunter did not identify any bugs on this side of the process, at least in this write-up. But there was a problem on the client side of the flow. Namely, the POST request to the bind endpoint had no CSRF protection at all. So let's change the attitude here. Instead of attacking the YouTube server to give us access to private videos of other users, we will attack the user and play his private video on our TV. What do I mean by our TV? Well, YouTube TV is just a website. To play the video as a TV, you don't need any hardware token or anything. You just need to make a few API calls to be able to communicate with YouTube API. High-level overview of the attack looks like this. First, we create a malicious TV or rather just a script that communicates with YouTube API like a TV. Then we pair the victim browser with our TV from step 1. Next, using the CSRF attack, we make the victim play their private videos on our TV, thus bypassing the access control. Let's take a closer look at pairing the victim with our TV. It's a 5-step process and the user must fill in the pin code first. 
it would be hard to perform this using just a CSRF. But in our case, we don't need it actually. The process is created like this so that the normal user only needs to rewrite nine digits into their browser. Then the browser exchanges this pin for a launch token. Obviously, it would be insane to make the user rewrite the whole launch token. But in our case, when we are executing a CSRF attack, the victim will be on our website anyway. So we can skip this part with pin codes and just put the launch token on the CSRF proof of concept website for the victim to use. With this, we have the pairing process taken care of. How about the video ID? At the beginning, I told you that this attack doesn't require leaking the video ID. What do we then send to the bind endpoint in context of the victim? Instead of video ID, we can send ID of the playlist. When you create a new playlist, it gets an identifier that is not predictable. However, you have a few playlists that YouTube creates for you by default. Watch later playlist with identifier WL, liked videos with identifier LL, but the most useful for us is uploads playlist with all your videos, including private ones. You can create the playlist ID based on the channel ID of the victim. For example, this is my channel ID. You can see it by just visiting my channel. It's not secret. And this is the ID of my uploads playlist. They differ only on the second character. Instead of C, there is U letter. If you open that playlist, you can only see my public and unlisted videos, but I will also see the private ones there. So in our exploit, instead of requesting a video ID, we request a list ID with the uploads playlist ID. You can hard code it onto the web page when targeting a victim. Then this request will be sent from our website in the context of the victim. The authentication cookie will be attached. How does this happen with same site cookie attribute? Well, Google doesn't seem to particularly like the security mechanism and sets the same site value to none for most cookies, which makes the CSRF possible. After the request is sent to the launch API, our TV makes a request to the bind endpoint, which responds with the video ID from the first video from the uploads playlist and a CTT token that allows watching a video if it was private. David created a proof of concept script that does this whole exfiltration phase for you and reads all victims' private and unlisted videos. You can read the script yourself if you want. The link is in the description. It also contains all the steps required to communicate with YouTube API like a TV. He was rewarded $6,000 for that report. The fix was simple. Now, the bind endpoint requires a better authentication header, making the CSRF impossible. That's it for this video. If you've made it that far, feed the YouTube algorithm with a like so that it recommends the video to other hackers that can learn something from it. Also, sign up for my newsletter. Apart from getting more tips and tutorials from me, you can also get there the best deals for any products that I create. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.